Welcome back to the form factor. Now, we're talking about uh, losing runs. This prompted by the fact that uh, Paul Nichols at the moment is going through a quiet spell. We all know why, because his horse is one or two of them are coughing. Um, Hugh, I was going to ask you, what's your longest losing run as a tipster? Um, since I started doing that the race, I remember I certainly had one of around 40, nearly yeah. 40. I think, I think I got to about 39. Uh -huh. And I've certainly had at least two or three of above 30. Um, and I would expect, we'll, we'll talk about the reasoning behind this, but I'd certainly mm. expect, given the general odds that I tip at, notwithstanding yesterday I went through a couple of short ones, but generally the mm. average SP mm. or the average odds advised of, my, of the horses I go for is in the region of 12 or 13 to 1. Um, and if, if you're looking at losing runs, we tend to look at losing runs in isolation and he is on the losing run whether it's a trainer mm -hmm. a punter a tipster or whatever he's on the losing run of so many yeah therefore he's out of form whether it's a trainer or whatever or a jockey you need to look at it in the context of what that trainer's normal strike rate is but perhaps more importantly what what the price are mm. well they're both important what price the horses are running what yeah. they're it's kind of like the actual versus expected and you can work that out as well by a sort of mathematical formula just by looking at the odds but you, it's, it's, I think it's an error to just look at a losing run and say, make a judgment about somebody's form mm. without looking at the context behind it, without looking at the data, which is the SP and the, and the, the normal strike rate. Mm. Um, and to that end, one of the advantages of modern computer equipment is you, you can run simulations quite easily to show what sort of losing runs you should expect over a given period of time, mm -hmm. over a given number of selections, if you specify what the odds are and what the strike rate are, particularly the strike rate. And I, d I did this um, yesterday for a couple of different scenarios. Right. And hopefully we've, we've got a graphic to show, to show the first of this. The first thing I did was uh -huh. I ran a series of 10 simulations each containing 500 selections, each containing 500 pieces of data, where the strike rate, it's an imaginary punter who has a 10% strike rate and everything he backs, all his selections are 10 to 1 shots. Now I realise this isn't a, a normal way of doing it because no punter only backs 10 to 1 shots, but sure. it, it gives us an idea of what sort of losing So one in every 10 expected. is winning, effectively. Now that, what that means is this punter is a long-term winner yeah. because a 10% strike rate backing 10 to 1 shots, you will, you will be winning mm. long-term. Mm -hmm. It should be 9 to 1 shots, but yeah. he's, if he's backing if he 10 to even. 1 shots. Yeah. And, I, and so series one is the first randomly generated series of 500 selections where the computer is instructed to give a 1 a 10% chance for each selection and it randomly generates win or loss and it will produce a long row of win lose win win lose and that sort of thing so that's a series one there is is a, is a losing run of 39 on that the projection longest that losing run program. in the first series of 500 selections so i picked yeah. 500 because that's about the normal number of selections i'd make in a year right. and it's a similar kind of strike rate and, and average odds to what i'd be i'd be doing Ten you would week. expect a losing run of 39 yeah and if you look down the column you can see that in every simulation of 500 selections if you like or 500 mm. runs you would expect a losing run in excess of 30 and the, lo the longest was 51 mm. um, and, and in, in Did each that case surprise you, that variance that 51 I think it would surprise I've, I've seen this before yeah um, you know I've looked I've looked at this before so no and also because this is what I do day in day out and yes. I see firsthand <laughs> what my own losing runs are like no it didn't but I think a lot of punters might be surprised that if you're picking 10 to 1 shots that you you should expect and you have a 10 percent strike rate you should expect losing runs like that because the intuitive thing to think is that you're going to go loser Nine, uh, sorry, winner, nine losers. Winner, yes. nine losers. Yeah. Winner, nine Not losers. a 51 losing run like that. It doesn't happen like that. You'll get the odd yeah. cluster of little winners together and also long sequences of losers. And I think we need to be aware of that. And that can give us a good idea of what would fall within normal parameters. Mm -hmm. So for, for a train How on earth would you deal with losing run of 51? I mean, as a, as a, as a tipster, a stroke punter here, yeah. how do you deal with that mentally? Because people like you do deal I, with I that think, mentally. I think that's what that's separates. How you have to keep going. Forget about me, for instance. Let, let's, a very good example. There's a, there's a, a punter and owner called Paul Moulton, who mm. uh, people who follow a lot of horse racing people on Twitter might follow me. He, he, he posts Tony a lot on, he, he has yes, yeah, Hanoverian yeah. Baron, Baron yeah. I think is his, and he's got a lot of quite good horses in training. But he's a serious punter. And there was an interview with him 
um, I can't remember where recently, and I think one of the things he said is that 93% of his selections lose. Right. Okay. And that's the sort of thing that will make most people sit up and think, what? And there was a quote from Luca Kamani <laughs> saying he'd, he'd give up if he, if, he, if, if he could only get it right 7% of the time. But it all depends on what odds you're backing at. Because if you're backing at odds of, say, 20 to 1, or even and 93% of your selections lose, you are going to be a long-time winner because mm. you only need to be hitting 5% to break even. Mm. So, or close to 5% to break even. Yeah. So, yeah. I think <clears throat> a lot of people find it hard to get their heads around. I, I know I probably did when, uh, you know, until I started studying this in more detail. I think people tend to look just at the raw data of losing runs without looking at um, the, the, the data within them and the, the significant stuff about you know, expected strike rate and, and odds. I then did a second simulation, which was deliberately done to try and mirror what you might expect from Paul Nichols. Uh, and in this case, instead of setting the, the strike rate at 10%, I set it at 25%, which, which is, is what, what his strike rate That's about what Paul be. Nichols normally achieves. Over the last five years, he's achieved um, a strike rate of 25%. And I don't know, if, again, if we've got the, the data yeah, for that, have. but you can yeah. see. Um, the longest losing runs from the same simulation, so 10 separate simulations, each with 500 selections in it, and the computer churned up losing runs like this, and the longest you can see is 26 at the bottom. So That's a winning if, punter again because they're odds of 3 to 1. Well, that would actually be, be breaking, breaking even. even. I set, yeah. I set, I set yeah. the parameters at 3 to 1. That would be breaking even 3 to 1 with a 25% strike rate. But the point remains the same, that losing runs, you still get quite long losing runs, even though you'd, you'd be expecting one in four to win. You'd still get quite long, but not nearly yeah. as significant, as not nearly as long as if you were having a 10% strike rate and, and tipping horses at, at, at 10 to 1, as we mm. saw in the previous one. Mm. That can give us a good idea and a good guideline as to what sort of losing runs we would say are significant and might not be significant for a trainer like Paul Nichols. Uh, and indeed, I, I went back and had a look at Paul Nichols' record over the last five years to see just what were his longest run, mm -hmm. losing runs. Mm -hmm. And again, here, here we go. These are the, 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 I think there's about 10 on here, the 10 longest losing runs that Paul Nichols has had in the last five years. Now, he's currently on a losing run of 30. Uh-huh. That's since Zarkandar on Friday. That's since Zarkandar. So he's, he's been a lot of horses in a short space of time. Yeah, which he tends The longest to do. losing run he's had in, over the last five years came in April 2009 when he had a losing run of 35. Yeah. But 28 of those came at the Aintree meeting. I think a few of them at least would have been in the national and big priced outsiders. A lot of them would have been in midfields. So you need to take mm. those sorts of things into account. And I don't think there would have been many sevens of all favourites in those. Looking at those, that's, that's, that's just the point of that as well, Hugh. That's yeah. significant. The entry meeting for Paul, because I tend to think he, he does tend to peak his horses for the festival at Cheltenham. I think he? possibly there, there's right. a tendency to be that the, the horses mm. are spot on that that meeting. They're maybe not quite their best. But other than that, entry. it's amazing how few really long losing runs he has. Now, part of that is down to the fact that you never <clears> go too far without Nichols having a a hot pot in a novice hurdle or a novice chase. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the reason why you never get long losing runs. But I think that does suggest to us that a losing run, and of course we know that there is something wrong with the state, yeah. something wrong. We know that there is something amiss with some of the horses because, because Paul Nichols, who as we say is very open, has told us. But it does suggest that a losing run of 30 is unusual for mm. the stable. Mm. And I think we need to, rather than just say, oh, he's on the losing run of 30. If it were a strainer, trainer whose strike rate was 5% over the year, and his horses tend to go off at bigger prices, a losing run of mm. 30 is completely immaterial. Mm. But we can, as punters, we can sometimes get drawn into seeing significant things, whereas in fact the data isn't sufficient. I mean, the Monsieur thing at Cheltenham last year was probably a good example because Hurricane Fly. Um, yeah, but broke well, that mold. That, he broke it, and I think yeah. there, was, there was another one, wasn't there? But um, Galileo, the, the, or the sample time, size was still quite small yeah. uh, compared with perhaps with Monsieur's overall strike rate. And mm. uh, whereas I, I would say. We, we don't always get the information that we've got from Nichols, from all trainers, when we're, when we're assessing whether a losing run is significant or not. Mm. And I think if we look in more detail at what we should be expecting from that particular trainer in terms of looking at his overall strike rate and looking at, at the odds, I think that will give us a better guide. You would clearly say from that this is an unusual losing run by Nichols standards. And that's what prompted you to research into that? 
to yes, see where it was. Yes, it was. I, I, I just think the whole yeah. the whole issue of losing runs <clears> is something that punters can get a little bit hung up on yeah. on the raw data without digging deeper to see what the reasoning behind to see if. If, for instance, remember a when lot of trainers are losing runs where they have horses placed all over the place. I think actually mm. among those thirty runners, has Paul not had about seven or eight seconds? Yes, he has, and yeah. he's had a few fallers as well. Yeah, I'm I'm fairly confident he'll have a winner or two in the next few days, oh, and then, then they ran all right yesterday. People say he's back to form. Yes, but I think I think there is. Having said all that, I, I do think there's enough data to suggest that even if we didn't know what Nichols had said, mm. you would say, well, a losing run of thirty is unusual. Uh, and you'd also want to go back and look at the prices of those 30 and the, the, I think there's only been one odds on favourite in them mm. but they haven't all been 33 to 1 outsiders or anything like that either it's yeah, not been yeah. he's yeah. had 10 runners in the Grand National that had little chance or anything like that so you, I think the point I'm making is that we need to look into data on losing runs in more detail than just the, the bare figure okay Brilliant. <laughs> I, I did that's, understand I hope that. that's made sense. I hope you understood it's, it's, that at home as well for those. I'm, um, I'm afraid I'm not very good at explaining these things. No, you but do. You I explained it, it really, really well. Some sense anyway. Yeah, I, I've also, I went into that thinking I'm not going to understand this, but I did, Hugh, so thank you. <laughs>